Hippolyte Amadi, a professor of medical engineering and technology, has emerged winner of the 2023 Nigeria Prize for Science, winning $100,000. The advisory board of the Nigeria Prize for Science, led by Professor Bas Naji, disclosed this at a press conference organized by the Nigeria LNG Limited in Lagos. Naji said the winner, whose novel scientific work on respiratory technologies has helped to keep Nigerian newborn babies alive, was selected from 100 entries. He noted that Amadi was recognized for his innovative work in the field of newborn and child health titled Innovation for Enhancement of Healthcare Ther Therapy. The entry showcased three technological innovations aimed at saving the lives of neonates by making the delivery of oxygen cheap and easy. Joining us now on The Morning Show as we discuss his scientific innovation is Hippolyte Amadi, a professor of medical engineering and technology and winner of the 2023 Nigeria Prize for Science. Good morning, Professor Amadi, and welcome to The Morning Show. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. And congratulations, Prof. Uh, 100,000, that's a lot of money in this economy. <laughs> I know you are either uh, at the Imperial College, but what was your first thought when you had the announcement and the impression on the Imperial College in London uh, where you work? And then why neonatal concerns? Is there any special reason? Because you also wrote a book, Born to Live and Not to Die. Yes. There's personal reason, right? Thank you so much. Um, yeah, uh, the first one, the reaction. Um, uh, I often don't, uh, don't, don't um, think about the price tag on it because uh, what matters so much to me is the uh, recognition of the fact that Nigeria has uh, a problem, a need, that a solution has been created, and this solution has been made available, but it has not fully reached the, the people that are supposed to be the recipients, and that is the newborn babies. So we have a solution, and we have recognized that this solution is effective. The next is to deliver it to the uh, babies. But uh, it can only deliver it when it's been acknowledged and it's been advised to do so. So that is my excitement, that finally the people I created uh, the solution for will get it because of the loud voices of LNNG and um, outlets like uh, Rice TV. Uh, many people will now know that we have a solution to this problem. That is the excitement for me. I don't even remember the, the price tag on it. I don't. It doesn't, it doesn't, it crosses my mind uh, once in a long while, but it doesn't dwell there. What dwells there is that more babies are going to survive now. And then that is my excitement. Coming from the side of my, okay, you asked about neonatal concerns. Right, uh, you know, in life, um, you would want to, think about what you should be remembered for when you die. And uh, quite early in life, I came across this problem and it became my concern. Um, and I'm talking about a period of 27 years. I've been trying to find a way of creating uh, solutions to solve the very problems that are crippling Nigeria in terms of neonatal survival. So it became my concern that every other thing I had to do in life, I consciously engineered them to revolve around this. So calling my global charitable organization United Concerns has got its roots down to what happened to me 27 years ago in a very little place called, um, called um, uh, uh, the Special Care Baby Unit of University of Calabar Teaching Hospital that I walked in just by chance like that, and then I was able to see uh, lizard looking creatures and they say these are babies and these babies uh, might not survive the next 24 hours. One, my passion was born from there. So it, my, 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 uh, this organization developed into uh, using this representative world as a neonatal concerns. For my university's reaction, uh, when this announcement was made, and by the way, I only got to know about what was going on 24 hours after. I didn't even know that uh, my name was all over the place in Nigeria. 
So, um, yes, I went to SANC and I, I contacted my department and told them what was going on. And of course, it's not easy to impress Imperial College. This is, this is, a, this is a global giant. So <laughs> there's nothing Imperial College hasn't seen. So for you, to, uh, for, you to, for you to do something that will make them uh, jump up, it must, it must be of global proportion. So uh, it really got me more excited when Imperial College began to show excitement. So it means that they have gone behind. Of course, they have powerful machines to go and verify what is really this thing, you know. And uh, for them to come back on Monday following the announcement to propose toast in the universe, in my department, that was when my excitement began, that Nigeria has actually shown themselves to be an uh, institution to be respected by the very giant Imperial College. And their celebration is still continuing. Maybe in the course of the interview, I may be able to tell Nigerians how much far away England, what happened here is being celebrated. And a lot of this will be going on huge billboards uh, because following what has happened, I've already been voted uh, for profiling for Black History Month. So a, a lot, wow. Nigeria is happening, you know, because That's of this. Brilliant. And in the UK, October is Black History Month. So yes, it's this quite Black History Month. Yep. That this has happened on such a historic show. You've made history as well as that figure. And I know that's quite important, not just for today, but for our young people in the future to look up to. So that's very brilliant. Thank you very much. Now, some of the advantages of your innovation is number one, the impact on your natal care, especially because now people can access it at a cheaper price. Yours would go for about 750,000 naira against the market price of 6.5 million naira. That's a significant difference. And then something really interesting about it is that it's powered by solar. And so it is not just um, the fact that it's going to save lives, it's also considering the environment and also tapping into an abundant resource that we have on this continent and perhaps in other parts um, around here. So, so share with us in terms of the process and has this been adopted? Where is this being used? Have hospitals contacted you? You, know, you talked about Calabar Teaching Hospital where you where, that inspired or ignited this dream. Has this been adopted? The president commended you as well, President Bala Metinubu. So what's the uptake of your innovation? Are hospitals um, buying? They should be rushing it at the moment. Um, I, I, I may, I may, um, I may disappoint you uh, to say that uh, it's not everywhere in Nigeria yet. So because um, LNNG uh, stumbled into one aspect of seven big stories that make a package. I, I want to explain so that our audience will understand. Uh, the reason loads of babies die in Nigeria and we are not able to save them are many and all of them work together to exact on the baby and the baby will struggle to defeat them the baby is like in a battle the baby will have to fight these various aspects of incapacitation in order to remain alive so the babies that are born i want to challenge my viewers if you cannot take anything home from what i'm saying take this one home they were all born to live, not to die. By the way, that's the title of my book. So they were all born to live, so they struggle to live. Unfortunately, the powers that are against them are often too much for them to handle. These babies are humans in their first 28 days of life, but the monster of that period is the first seven days of life. Because within the first seven days of life, World Health Organization tells us that four out of five, or if you like, eight out of 10 babies that will die, 10 newness that will die, will die within the first seven days of life. That is the monster of a period. And if you are not a master of the first seven days of life, come on, you're going to lose them big time, and that's what is happening in Nigeria, okay? So yeah, people are fascinated with the fact that I created a device that is so cheap, a device that 
the polite heart is not a conventional ventilator. The polite heart is a ventilator born out of a need, well understood need, concerning people that are well understood, are well known. I know the Nigerian people, I know the African skin, I know the African problem. I was just not one professor in England creating one machine for one part of the world like that. No, I put my passion, my love into it. So I was creating, focusing on the person I want to save. So, um, so the other fallouts, like it's, uh, it's a device that makes use of uh, solar energy. It's a device that is uh, uh, easily uh, manipulated. It is a device that, um, that does better job than other devices. It's actually as a result of what I wanted in the patient. So, so, so having a device that will not just help the baby to breathe, but while doing that, it is teaching that baby how to breathe. And it is also keeping the baby warm from the inside. So it's one device doing so many things. And that's why the device is very, very um, successful. Okay? So it's also not just having a ventilator. If you have a ventilator, but you do not have enough oxygen to supply to the babies, you have nothing. So I will not stop at creating the ventilator because, yeah, I created the ventilator first, and then the other problem came staring me in the face. The ventilator will be there. The babies are not saved. Why? Oxygen not available. Yeah, one, two, three oxygen bottles in the unit. We have seven distressed babies. It's only three that's going to get the oxygen. The other four will struggle and die. Therefore, what can I do to make sure that even if it's just one oxygen bottle, up to seven babies receive from it? It wasn't existing. I've got to create it. So what if, because I have a mantra that says, enough of asking the, these babies to come to the city looking for us. Let us take our medicine to them. How do I take my medicine to a village location where a baby is? How will I do neonatology without power? I've got to find a way of making my friend, my, my machine to be friendly with the sun so that I don't have to beg the Nigerian Nepal to give me light. 24-7, that will be power to sustain the baby, that will be power for light, because we need bright light, like in this studio, to do neonatology. And mm -hmm. it got to be available in the village 24-7. Impossible. But science makes it possible. It took me many years to create all these things. So, so no, I'd ask my uptake. Mm -hmm. You know, you said it, it wasn't the spread. People hadn't taken it up in terms of hospitals. Yes, yes, yes. The reason, uh, uh, Ayo, is that the... Um, you know, when, when you create new things, especially things that have got different character from the conventional. I just said something here, and I'm sure that some clinicians listening to me will say, wow, it is not just helping the babies to breathe. The polite heart does two other extra things that are not usually described in the books. Teaching the baby how to move the chest. And also, targeting internal organs to keep them warm. Irrespective of what is hap happening superficially, yeah, the baby may be inside the incubator just warming the skin, but we are talking about the deep organs that sometimes chill down because of what we do. We call it aerotrogenic. You're doing certain operations not intending to chill down the internal organs, but you're doing it. So there's internal hypothermia that kills that baby, even, even when the baby shows the signs of being warm superficially. So the polite heart goes right deep down, doing all these things. So, now, when you create this kind of systems, you would agree with me that the system comes with character. And this character has got to be taught. What if you're too busy to learn the character of the machine to operate the machine? It becomes unpopular. Okay. You don't want to use it. Okay. Yep. At first, on behalf of many children down the line that will be saved by this, I'm sure their generations will thank you. <clears throat> and I thank you this morning for your service because it's indeed your life work. It's not just a professor fiddling in a lab, doing another great project that will win him a big prize. What I'd like to ask you is this. What would you do to guide against big pharma? Your competitors that charge six million for, for this are big pharma. They will not want to see this alternative come to life. How can we mass produce to get it out? And I say it because I know the pharmaceutical industry how it goes. Big pharma will do everything to want to shut it down. 
What are you going to do and how are we going to keep this alive? Speak to Nigerians. You never know who might be watching this morning. Thank you, Rafael. I, um, the disappointment that those people are going to... Of course, I do know that there are people out there who are not uh, happy with what has happened. But unfortunately, I'm not talking about money. Money is not a factor. To me, it's not. My main factor that drives what I do is saving lives. Unfortunately for them, yeah, they are too big, they are too powerful, they can suppress whatever thing I do, but they cannot kill me and kill the idea because before they knew what was going on, there had been a demonstration. It's actually left for the people, the people of Nigeria, the mothers, the fathers, who never knew that their babies had died of preventable causes. Now I'm telling you guys that the babies can live. I had to go out of the conventional Nigerian technique to demonstrate it. So the big pharma you're talking about, they are too powerful in the conventional. But they will look down on the unconventional. And maybe because they did not concentrate so well on the unconventional, I was able to demonstrate proof of concept. And that was what happened in Niger State. And I want to pay great tribute to the former governor of Niger State, um, Governor Bello, and particularly his wife, Dr. Amina Abubakar Bello. She found me far away at Addis Ababa. And she said, Prof, what I've heard you say at the African House is so fascinating. Could you please visit me in Niger State? And that was, I'm not going into that story, but that's how the journey of Mina started, and then I created this. I created it based on unconventional devices and techniques that run in Nigeria. I had to train my own staff. I had to bend them the way I want them. They are not stiff professionals. They are young people that are never regarded. Basic nurses, uh, you know, young uh, basic medical uh, 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 doctors and the medical officers, and I had to bend them and show them how this unit should be run. And they followed the steps. You know the result? They have, this is not my word, but Gate Foundation visited them and told them that they've been going around Africa, they've never seen any unit like this. That was Gate Foundation. That was after we had operated for about one year, six months. So you're saying the people should make the advocacy for this. Sure. Yeah. They should take it up and if the, ask If the them. babies are surviving in, in, in Mina, this was a place that had mortality of 90%. But five years after, mortality dropped to 4%. What are you talking about? The okay. mothers themselves know that, yeah, our babies could live. If you watch some of the video that uh, the government of Niger State released in 2022, because they kept it quiet because I requested for it and for five years. Uh, prof, really excited sit at the same table with uh, someone, you know, who will fall into the category of uh, those persons, uh, a former president, described as diamonds, yes. the people who make Nigeria shine on the world stage. And I hope that the Federal Ministry of Health and other state governments, you know, uh, will have been listening to you, will watch this, and then see how they too, you know, can uh, benefit and their people can benefit from this uh, innovation. Really great to have you. Thank you Thank very you so much for joining us.